Saturday Night Theatre. We present the last production in the Flora Robson Festival. The villagers of Denzil St. David in Norfolk will not forget that night in February 1947. With the waters higher than for a hundred years and the increasing danger of the great dike collapsing, many were leaving their homes for the safety of Norwich, 15 miles away. Many others were beginning to trickle up to the high ground where stood the convent of Our Lady of Reims, a French nursing order. Bonaventure. The play by Charlotte Hastings, adapted for radio by Peggy Wells, stars Flora Robson as Sister Mary Bonaventure. The wind and rain beating upon the grey walls of the convent of Our Lady of Reims could be heard inside the great hall where the fading daylight shone through the stained glass windows of the great room, calm and somberly beautiful in the dim light. They're getting out boats and sandbags in the village, Phillips. They say the great dike may come down. Fred, for heaven's sake, stop talking. You're on duty in 19 and three quarter minutes precisely. And do something about your hair. If Sister Mary Bonaventure sees you with it falling out of your cap like that... She won't be stuffy. She's got a sense of humour. You know, until I came to the convent, I thought all nuns were very calm and detached. I didn't expect them to laugh and be approachable like other people. I suppose it's because this is a nursing order. They're not out of touch with the world. There's not sufficient discipline here. Sometimes I'm really surprised at Sister Mary's attitude to the patients. A qualified woman with her authority. After all, she is matron. Now, when I was at the Memorial Hospital... Oh, in, uh... All right, all right, you told us. Bless us. At this rate, you'll be mummified before you're 30. The prospect need not affect you. I'm leaving at the end of this month. But how silly. This is a grand place to train. Mary's a wonderful teacher and the food's superb. I don't like the lax atmosphere. Oh, and I object to that horrible Willy prowling about. Willy's all right. If you don't show your aversion... Poor thing, couldn't help being born. Ah, oh, here's Sister Josephine with your supper. You'll have to be quick. I'm starving, Sister. Well, here you are, then. But what you want, young lady, are some hairpins. Which particular film star are you copying? <laughs> it was so windy. I've been to look at the water. Sister, what will happen if the great dike doesn't hold? Well, all the villagers will be homeless and crowding up here on the high ground. And where we shall put them and how we shall feed them, goodness only knows. Food's no problem to you. You're a genius. Look, Phillips. Mushroom omelette and a heavenly savoury sauce. <coughs> Honestly, if I stay here long enough, I shall get fat. Ah, uh ah, -uh, no. Wait a moment. Wait? But why, sister? Well, no blessing, child. <gasps> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Dear Lord, thank you for my most excellent supper and for making Sister Josephine such a divine cook. No, no, no. Let's have a little reverence. Benedictus. Benedictus, 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 Benedictus,
some they're making for Norwich, but they won't get there, they won't. Waters be terrible strong once they're out. <laughs> smash a little boat in a minute, they will. Smash her into nothing. Now, now, <laughs> Willie, Willie. Have we seen Sister Mary, please? She promised I some sweet as she did, out of the big brass box in her room. I've been polishing her. Are you sure you haven't taken a few sweets already? Why would I do that, Nurse Phillips? Why not? Because tis in the wise book that sister reads. Keep thy hands from picking and stealing. <laughs> have my hands been picking and stealing, sister? I'm quite certain they have, but, Willie. But Nurse Phillips, she said they've been picking and stealing. Don't be quiet. And keep them away from my apron. Oh, They're you... filthy. They may be filthy, but they got no sin on them. Leastways, I can't see none. Can you say sin on my hand, sister? Tell her you can't see oh, no well, sin on my hand. Don't no, listen to she's me, She's down on me, she is. Why? Nothing of the kind. I never hurt her. I never hurt the littlest crawling thing. If I saw anyone hurting anything, Nurse Phillips, I'd crush them. So I would. I, I, I'd crush them. And I, oh, I'd get crush them from me. Get away. <laughs> Forget the words again, Willie. Uh, I, I lost them, sis. They're in your head. Think now, think carefully. To everything. To everything. Mm, th th uh, there is to everything a, a season. Season. And a time. Mm. Uh, and a, a, a time to every purpose. Under, uh, uh, and under the heavens. A time to plant. A time to... Uh, I lost it, sister. I lost it. What comes after planting? A, a, t a time... T yeah. A time to pluck up that which is to be planted. Yeah, though, that was the hard part. A, a time to you kill. The rest. And a time to heal. Yes, really go on. A time to break down. And a time to build up. I, 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 sorry, Sister Mary. Good boy, Willie. Sister, my hands clean the sin. There's fire dirt there, and, and, and that's metal polish. And, and I, I mean, are, are they... Yes, Willie. Proper clean. Proper clean. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> now, c could I ha have the sweetest on the big brass box with the eagle on the top? Very well, you know where they are. <laughs> yes, sister. <laughs> I have asked you all to use gentleness and tact with that poor mind. I'm afraid tact is not Nurse Phillips' speciality. I told him his hands were filthy, which of course they were. I see you finished your supper, Nurse Brent. Will you go on duty now, please? Read the notes I've left about Mrs. Thomas. Read them carefully. We shall need your help. Yes, sister. Uh, one moment, nurse. Your hair is very soft and pretty, but while you are on duty, I think you should roll it back more neatly. Yes, sister. Thank you, sister. Nurse Phillips, I want you to remember you can always calm Willie with words, any words with colour in them, or even a verse. If you'll forgive my speaking bluntly, sister... I don't think he should be allowed so much freedom. He's so quickly roused. And with that mentality and his muscular strength, he could quite easily be very dangerous. That's for us to judge. He's probably better employed up here than at Liberty in the village. But it's a question of... In this case, of tolerance. Tolerance undermines discipline. If you forgive my speaking bluntly in turn, nurse, I don't think you appreciate the borderline between discipline and severity. I... Uh... I'm sorry you're leaving us. You're an excellent nurse, and I'm sure you'll make your way in the profession. Only, if you could just realize humanity isn't ruled in straight lines, I think perhaps you would be happier. Thank you, sister. Will you excuse me? Run along, then. Nurse Phillips? Yes, sister? I don't mean to preach, you know. No, sister. There, Sister Josephine, goes the potential matron of a state institution. Mm. She'll run it most efficiently. With discipline. Discipline. Uh, it's a pity she's not staying. You wear them all down in time. Not at all. They merely come round to our way of thinking. 
Look, I've brought down that tapestry we found in the old cupboard. Such a pity. I'm afraid it's past repairing. Sister Agnes will tackle it. Now sit you down by the fire. You've had no sleep for nearly two nights. Even you can't go on forever. You promised me to sit there for a quarter of an hour, oh. and then I'll take a bowl of hot onion soup to your room. That'll put heart into you. Your onion soup would put heart into a graven image. Good evening, Sister Mary. Ah, oh. oh, good, good evening, evening Doctor. doctor. Uh, tell me, Doctor, uh -huh. as a medical man, would you consider half an hour's rest a mortal sin? <laughs> I certainly should not. Then try convincing Sister Mary. That'll keep you busy. Well, that means you haven't been to bed since I left, Sister Mary. I've had all the rest I need. Ah, you've such a Spartan idea of your own needs. You can't go on giving yourself like this. I insist you rest. But, Doctor... No, that's an order, Matron. Yes, Doctor. Thank you. But aren't you making rather a late visit? I'm staying here ready. That dyke can't possibly hold. Apparently, we coped with the same thing 60 years ago. We can do it again now. <laughs> what you mean, sister, is that you'll cope and we shall follow. <laughs> well, I'm going to have a look at Mrs. Thomas. Very well, Doctor. Oh, good evening, Reverend Mother. I'm surprised to hear you feel so late, Doctor. I felt I must be on the spot in case the dyke comes down, Reverend Mother. Oh, Reverend Mother. No, don't get up, sister. I know you're off duty. I just wanted to check with you that we're ready for all emergencies. Yes, Reverend Mother. We've managed to clear those two large wards. We can put the men in one and the women and children in the other when they arrive. Good. They'll have to camp out for a little until we can get properly organised and they can keep control themselves. Sister Agnes is ready at the switchboard for messages. Uh, by the way, Willie's mother has come up. Their cottage has already gone, I'm afraid. Oh. She'll be very helpful. I expect you can find beds for them both? Yes, of course. You look tired. Very tired. I've been watching you for some weeks. When this weather clears, would you care to go into retreat for a little while? No, I would not. I'm sorry. If you wish to send me away... How long have you been here? Six years? Nearly seven. We've never had our hospital run so efficiently. No, I don't want to lose you. You're tired, and for the moment the world seems stronger than the spirit. It will pass. I'm sure it will pass. Thank you, Reverend Mother. If you want to rest later, it can be arranged. If you're happier working, as I think you are, the work is certainly to hand. Reverend Mother. Yes, Sister Josephine. Uh, Reverend Mother, there's a man wanting to speak to you. Uh, they're travelling from London by car. He and two women and a driver. They're cut off by the flood water. Will you bring them in, Sister? Uh, yes, Reverend Mother. Be ready with your onion soup. Yes, Reverend Mother. <laughs> you see, Sister Mary, no need to look out for work. Would you be so good as to give Sister Josephine a little assistance? Yes, Reverend Mother. Sister. Yes, Reverend Mother. We need you badly. Don't be too kind to me. I find a few things harder to fight than vanity. Would you be pleased to come this way? Good evening, madam. Oh, good evening. Come in. You must be nearly drowned. I'm sorry to arrive like this, madam. But we're travelling to Norwich from London, and I'm afraid the car is waterlogged. Oh, we should have many people coming here to the high ground tonight. Uh, come to the fire. But I thought you had others with you. Yes. Two ladies. Ask them to come in. Come in, Miss Pierce. Good evening, madam. Good evening. Come in, both of you. Thank you. Well, your friend, she looks positively exhausted. Are you ill, my dear? No, I'm not ill. Thank you. If I might sit by your fire... But certainly. Let me take your wet coat. Leave it, please. We're very grateful to you, madam. I hope we're not um, disorganizing things. Oh, not at all. One of our sisters is getting you something hot. Are you sure your friend uh, Madam, is... uh, could I have a word with you in private, if you please? I assure you we are quite private here. I think I ought to speak to you quite alone, madam, if you don't mind. Oh, very well. Will you come with me? Thank you. I'm going to take off my shoes and stockings. They're wet through. I should take yours off, too. You'll get a chill, Miss Khan. That would be very inconvenient, wouldn't it? Think how the calendar would be thrown out. Oh, please, it won't help In fact, the whole thing is very humorous, Pierce. A convent of all places. The holy woman is going to get an unpleasant shock in a few minutes. Your coat is soaked. Let me take it off. Take your hands off me, Pierce. I've told you that before. Don't be difficult, Miss Khan. It's my privilege to be what I can while I can. And get away from me, please. There's plenty of space here. 
Get away, please. Mm, very well. I'll sit over by the table. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. You must be very chilled. I can recommend this very excellent soup. Oh, some of us think our cook has missed her vocation. It looks and smells wonderful. <laughs> it tastes better. Will your friend come to the table, or would she like it there by the fire? I'll take it to her. Uh, no, no, sit down and drink yours while it's nice and hot. Here you are, my dear. Why, that wet coat, you poor child. Do let me take your coat. Thank you. That's right. And your shoes, they're wet through. Won't you take them off? All right. Let me take them off for you. No, get up. Get up at once. But why? Well, get off your knees in front of me. Now, steady. Take a grip on yourself. Oh, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I beg your pardon, sister. She, she's a little upset. She must be ill. Oh, she's not ill. Just, just take no notice. There must be something terribly wrong. She is she's neither ill nor insane. Believe me, sister, the best way you can help is to be normal. If you assure me... It is the only thing. Very well. My dear, won't you at least come back to the fire? Very well. And have some hot soup to warm you. Here you are. Thank you. That's better. Thank you for humouring me. Now, I'll see if I can find you both some slippers. You're very good, sister, but don't bother. As soon as we can, we must be on our way to Norwich. I'm afraid you won't get to Norwich tonight. It wouldn't be safe to try. Oh. The great dyke may give way at any time, unless the men achieve a miracle of engineering. Then we might be here for some time. Some days, perhaps. Mm. You are right about the soup. My compliments to your cook. For what they were. Oh, she'll be delighted. Nothing pleases her more than to have her work appreciated. Life must be very calm and pleasant here. Yes. Out of the world and away from temptation. I believe that is the popular conception. How does it really work? In work. No doubt you're filled with a sense of spiritual well-being. But are you happy? Are you? Oh, God. Uh, oh, won't you tell me what is wrong? Mr. Mary! Sister Mary! Something's happened. Sister, Excuse me. sister, the big dyke has gone. They just sent word. They're leaving the village. I got to ring the great bell. Will Reverend it? Mother says to ring the warning bell. Will oh, it? Come. Will I got to ring him loud and clear to warn the people. The floods be out. The floods be out. The floods be out. Can I do anything? No, we're prepared. Yes? Sister Agnes? Yes. Ring through to Norwich and let them know. What? Well, we all know what to do. Thank you. Miss Pierce, we can't get away tonight. We shall have to telephone. There's no outside communication. Oh? Reverend Mother, Sister Agnes has just told me the wires are down. We all know what we have to do, Sister. Sister, Sister Mary, can you come? The dyke's gone. They're bringing in the casualties. Uh... Sarah! <laughs> Now, now, Miss Khan. Sarah Khan? Yes, that's my name. Does it mean anything to you? Think, sister. Sarah Khan. You'll have to know, sister. I'm afraid it will distress you. If she's to know, I'd like to tell her myself. No, no, come with us. There's a good girl. Be quiet. Sister Mary, my name is Sarah Khan. Three weeks ago, I was tried and convicted for the murder of my brother. We've just come back from London from hearing the appeal. It has been dismissed. Come in. Shall I put this armchair opposite the other one, madam? No. Here, please, officer, by the desk. Yes, madam. Officer. Yes, madam. Please call me sister. I have specially asked for this office and the bedroom adjoining to be put at your disposal. Because I want to be in touch with Miss Khan, I may be able to bring her a little comfort. The Reverend Mother gave me to understand that. 
Is there anything I ought to know? You do realise, don't you, that Miss Khan mustn't be left. Either Miss Pierce or myself must be with her day and night. Yes, officer. You will have no objection to my being here when I'm off duty. Certainly not. Does anyone else come in here during the day? Dr. Jeffries. Oh. We'll take Miss Khan into the bedroom when he comes. You see, it's rather unfortunate. He was chief witness for the prosecution. I see. Anyway, I'm hoping it won't be more than a few days, particularly if the telephones are repaired. Now, if you'll excuse me, sister... Officer, oh, I'll come yes, and box your ears, Willie. I will. Oh, dear, what's Willie done now, Martha? Oh, that boy of mine's got above himself since he come to work here, sister. I still think tis a pity they wouldn't take him in the army. Well, I'm sure he'll make himself very useful at this difficult time. Ah, their bedroom's near about straight, sister. Willie's put up another bed for Miss Pierce. Oh, just a and moment, then... Martha, please. Will you come back in a moment? Oh, I'm sorry, sister. I, uh, I'll be, be in the bedroom, keeping an eye on that boy of mine. What is your opinion of the verdict, officer? The jury were only out for 15 minutes. I'm not asking you as an official. I'd rather you didn't ask me at all. You see, there are some you feel are the type for it, and others... Well, it's not so easy to believe. And when all is said and done... Only Almighty God ever knows the truth. He and one other, sister. One other? The prisoner. Ah. Excuse me, sister. It's all right, Martha. Oh, uh, thank you, sister. Martha, you were Miss Khan's housekeeper, weren't you? Ah, surely. Right from the time she come to the village to do them big wall paintings for the church. We were at the Grape House, the big cottage over to Denville, St. David. Mr. Fenning's old place, yes, I know. Mm, took a good lease of it, she did, along with the old barn next door. Willie fixed that up for her like it were a proper painting place. And did you get on with her? You never found her difficult? Nay, she's an artist, of course. Up like the rocket and down like the stick. But leave her be, and she mind her own business, and yours too. Sweet as any bird. Uh, we were fine till Mr. Jason come along. Mr. Jason? That was her brother? Yes. Well, we'd been settled about a month, and he walked in on us at breakfast one morning, all smiles and as cool as you please. Ah, vicious bad he was, and no mistake. I'd have said his death were a proper blessing if it hadn't been for poor Miss Carn. So you think she was responsible? Oh, I never said that, sister. And what's more, I never said it in court, neither. But by the time that lawyer gentleman had done asking me questions, you'd have thought I'd seen her do it with me own eyes and standing up there to tell him so. Sister, that were a terrible moment. Giving evidence? Nay, when the judge put on that little black cap and spoke them words. Do you, do you know the word, sister? Yes, Martha, I do. Oh, I never looked up, sister. I never looked up till I knew they'd taken her away. You were called for the crown, Martha. You had to answer their questions. Uh, the lawyer gentleman said only to tell them what they asked and no more. Well, there was some things they never asked, so I never told them. Maybe there was something you should have told them. Oh, I don't suppose it were important. Just some funny words I overheard her say one night when he'd been rowing her worse than usual. Yes. She said, I should have thought that royal affair in Florida would have been a lesson to you. Oh. Hmm, that's what she said. Sounded like he'd been playing round in higher circles than usual. Sister, I fixed them casters. Now then, big ears, don't stand idle. Get and fill that stove for sister. We can take another turn later. If you like, yes. That's Miss Sarah. Now, Willie. Uh, Miss Sarah, <laughs> I'm not glad I proper missed you when you're coming back to the great house. Oh, now, Willie. Willie, you haven't had any sweets this morning. Get the brass box. 
Yes, sister. <laughs> I, I could just do it one right now. One of them big green ones that tastes like cinnamon. <laughs> There's the dust I've been picking out. Willie. Would you like one too, Miss Sarah? Sister wouldn't mind. No, thank you. Take a little lump, Willie, and go with Martha. Yes, sister. Goodbye, Miss Sarah. I see you when I make up the stove. <laughs> Look. <laughs> I get two, three sweets when they stuck, see? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm that sorry, Miss Herrat. He just doesn't understand. Come on now, Willie, will you? Come on. I, I got three that time. Come on, on, Willie. Are these your rooms? This one and the one through there? Yes, Miss Khan. And you've given them up to us. It's very comforting, the warmth. And the flowers. I'm glad you like it. Spacious, too. One can move around. Whom do I know here besides Martha and Willie? Dr. Jeffries. Oh. Does he use this room? Occasionally. But if you'd rather... Oh, don't worry. I can go into the bedroom. Not having visitors for a couple of months has made me rather unsociable, hasn't it, Pierce? You could have had visitors. And flowers. No, thank you. The wrong atmosphere for both. Ah, oh, sister, have you got those slides with... Oh. oh, sorry, I, I, I didn't expect to... To see me here? Well, now you have. Don't be uncomfortable about it. I, uh, I would have come to see you at the... at Norwich. Only I told you I didn't want anyone. Oh, don't worry, there's no ill feeling. You did your best for me at the time. Is there anything else I can do? Uh, whoever your church committee gets to finish off my murals, for God's sake, don't let them daub those angels on the left with gold leaf. It'll ruin everything. Right. Now, Pierce, I, I'd rather be in the bedroom. Yes, Miss Cowan. So, uh, you knew her before? Uh, uh, I'm on the uh, church committee. When they decided to restore those murals on the south wall, I recommended Sarah Cowan because I'd seen and admired her work. It's good, then? Oh, first rate. She'd a picture in the academy the year before last. What was the subject? Well, uh, rather unfortunate in the light of later events death of Lucretia Borgia. So it was poison? Yes, it was. I don't know the details. Uh, then I shouldn't bother to find out, sister. But I... Have you by any chance those slides we made for tests? Uh, yes, Doctor. In uh -huh. the cupboard. Ah, thanks. Martha seems very concerned about Miss Kahn, Doctor. Just why are you so persistent? Because I want to know, and you're the one person who can tell me. What good can it do if you do know? If I'm ignorant of the facts, I may be tactless with every word I say. True enough. Very well. Where shall I begin? At the beginning. Well, uh, have you ever heard of, of David Kingham? Kingham? Um, wait a minute. The right-hand politician, isn't he quite a coming man? Not now. He was so prominent in this case and fought for her so desperately that it's bound to have prejudiced his position. But why was he dragged into it? He and Sarrett were to have been married. Oh. He was away on a government mission for six months, and she wanted to finish the murals in our church before he returned. The trouble began when her brother Jason turned up out of the blue and settled at the grape house. If ever there was a rotten, corrupt swine, it was Jason Kahn. He was a confirmed alcoholic... Poor man. Poor. Sarah kept him for years. Well, some weeks after he arrived, he collapsed suddenly, and no wonder. A stroke? Yes, I'd warned him, but he was seldom sobered enough to listen. He recovered his mental powers slowly, but he was partially paralyzed. Just punishment enough. Except that Sarah took the strain. Could he have been put in an institution? An inebriate home, oh, yes. But these things take time. And one day, Sarah called me into the dining room and asked me frankly just how long he would live. Martha was in the room at the time. She remembers the conversation. The tragic thing is that these people drag on for years. Or, as I told her, die quietly in their sleep. She said she was desperate. Her work was suffering and that she'd written to Kingham, postponing her marriage. But why do that? Well, she rightly felt she couldn't saddle him with the responsibility of Jason. Of course, Kingham would have helped her. But she's very proud. 
So I've been told. Well, I promised I would try and arrange to get him into an institution, but I warned her such a life might affect Jason's sanity. I remember so well what she said. Yes? She said, while he's well, he's on my hands, and while he's ill, he's on my conscience. A terrible responsibility for the poor girl. I was able to ease her nights for her. We kept him under drugs. It was the only way to bring relief to either of them. No night nurse? No, not necessary. The day nurse left at six. At eight, Sarah gave him the drug. One tablet each night. No need for details. It was a narcotic, of course. One of the barbiturates put up in tablet form. Three weeks' supply was ordered at a time. That is, 21 tablets packed singly in a small glass vial. Where did they come from? Every three weeks, I collected these 21 tablets from Abel Harmer, the village chemist. We checked the number into the file, sealed it, and I delivered it to Sarah personally. I warned her not to give more than one tablet in 24 hours. I begin to understand. At the end of November, I went to Norwich for three weeks' vacation. I delivered the usual file the day I left. Twenty-one tablets? Yes. Four days later, Dr. Giles, my locum, telephoned me to say Jason had been found dead that morning. Will it shock you if I admit my first reaction was one of overwhelming relief? I think I might have felt the same. Until Giles told me that from the evidence of vomiting and so on, he suspected an overdose of the drug. So he checked the tablets in the file. Now, listen carefully. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. Uh, have you got something? Ah, yes. Yes, this box of sweets will do. Uh, here it is, sister. Uh, 10, uh, 12, uh, 18, 21. 21 tablets. Now, one a night for four nights. How many left? Four from 21, 17. There were 17 tablets left in the file. But I don't see... Neither Giles nor I could understand it either. So I took it on myself to get those 17 tablets analysed. And they found? 15 were correct. The remaining two were harmless aspirin. The police found a half-empty bottle of aspirin in Sarah's room. And Jason had had three sleeping tablets that night instead of one. Exactly. Now do you see why I don't want to be reminded of it all? But couldn't Jason have taken them himself, um, suicide and arranged things? He was paralyzed. Oh, yes, of course. And as I told you, Martha had been in and out of the room that time that Sarah spoke to me. At the inquest, they got that damning conversation out of her practically word for word. But this doesn't make sense. Miss Khan's a highly intelligent woman... She would have known you'd suspect an overdose and analyze the file. Sister, if you had no medical knowledge and gave someone an overdose of a narcotic, how would you expect them to die? Oh, I don't know. I suppose quietly in their sleep. Mm -hmm. And I told her he might die that way. Yes, you did. I'd forgotten that. The prosecution didn't, I assure you. In fact, the defense wanted her to admit to a mercy killing, but she flatly refused. Mm -hmm. Well, now you must forgive me if I push off. Oh, very well, Doctor. I can be around somewhere if you want me. Dr. Jeffries has gone now. Bess has an idea she'd like to explore your bookcase. It's a bit dull for her. You played cards at first, but it's rather pause. Do have whatever you want. Those on the top shelf are mostly textbooks, but there's some fiction lower down. Mm. Thank you, sister. Miss Kahn, will you tell me something and forgive me for asking? Ah, surely. <laughs> Why wouldn't you let counsel plead a mercy killing? I'll answer you as I answered him. Because although I had often wished Jason dead, I had never felt called upon to do anything about it. Sufficient? Completely. Thank you. Good. Isn't this the tapestry you had in the hall? Yes, it's very old. We discovered it hidden away some weeks ago. Sister Agnes was going to try and repair it, but I'm afraid it's beyond her. If she's a good needlewoman, I don't see why. The design is lost. Well, how do you mean? Uh, may I take it to the window? Yes. Oh, I see. The pattern doesn't occur. Oh, what a pity. Oh, it's magnificently done. Look at the exquisite stitches. The Reverend Mother wanted it restored for the chapel. 
But we couldn't do it unless Sister Agnes had something to work from. What we need is an artist. You mean... Mm. No, Sister. There isn't time. Would it take so long? No, Sister. You see, a piece of plain canvas to back the missing strip with the design outlined, even roughly. I'd need materials, colours. Oh, I'm sure we could supply most of them. Oh, no, Sister, I can't. Besides, it would have to be on a proper frame. We might even have that. Sister Agnes teaches needlework. And think what we'd have to remember you by. Remember me? That would be wonderful. Every time anyone looked at it, and on the chapel wall of all places, what would they say? See that embroidery? Do you know who designed it? Sarat Khan, the murderer. The artist. Because it might be there for generations. And only the beauty would be remembered. Have you something I can measure with? Will this steel tape do? <laughs> Thank you. Now, we'll have to allow here... And there for overlap, mm -hmm. say, ooh, two feet. No, 18 inches would do. Oh. And here again, two feet, three. Have you a pencil and paper, sister? Here you are. Oh. I've brought some coffee for Miss Carne and Miss Pierce. Thank you, Sister Josephine. Uh, it's good of you, sister. Thank you. Uh, may we have it in the bedroom? Certainly. We'll spread the tapestry on the beds. It'll be easier. If you want to help me, Pierce, I'll be grateful. Yes, Miss Carne. If we get that far, I might even let you mix the colours, Pierce. Drink this coffee up while it's hot now. Thank you so much, sister. I wondered why that tapestry was brought up here from the hall. Sit down, sister Josephine. Okay. I need your help. Oh, well, that's a reversal of normal procedure, I must say. I've been talking to Miss Kahn. Poor desolate soul. Nothing of the kind. Oh? She's a brilliant, sensitive woman. And from the moment I saw her, something passed between us. It was as if her tragedy, her agony of mind, entered into me. Oh, no, that was only because... Because I know she is no more guilty of this crime than I am myself. You can't possibly do anything. Don't, sister. I must. It's as if I were driven from within. But you're at such a disadvantage. I begin with one great advantage. A complete conviction of her innocence. Well, what could you do against the whole process of the law? I want every possible detail of the trial. Somewhere there's a link, a little flaw. That's why I need you. Me? Those piles of newspaper you're always hoarding. Oh. Find me every scrap dated ah, January, particularly the local uh, paper. But I may have used them. It's three weeks ago. Go and look, Sister Josephine. Very well. It's a blessing I'm methodical. It won't take a second, provided they're there. The cupboard's just outside. But don't break your heart if they're not there. Oh, uh, Sister Agnes, could we lay hands on some of the old school materials? Uh, no, poster paints for preference. Oh, good. Yes, urgently. Miss Kahn is going to do the design for your tapestry. Yes, I will list. I knew you'd help. Oh, that would be wonderful. And have we a tapestry frame? Well, Willie can mend it. He's an excellent carpenter. Thank you, Sister. There's organisation for you. Two bundles. Oh. Here, now, you take the London ones and I'll take the local ones. This is wonderful, Sister Josephine. Now, December, December, January. Here we are. First, seven. No, no, nothing here. January the 14th. This is it. Let's have a look. The case against Sarat Khan. Trial of noted artist opens at Assizes. Where's the local paper for January the 21st? We must have that. The uh, summing up's bound to be practically verbatim. Uh, oh, it's not here, I'm afraid. It must be. It has to be. Why should that particular issue be lost or destroyed? Think, Sister Josephine, think. January, now, what happened here in January? Uh, I did all the cupboards. The linen cupboards oh. for the new year. Uh, we did your cupboard. That one there. Quickly. Now, now what have we got lying in the shelves? Uh, now, it's a local paper right enough. Though I don't remember using it here. You see, December, October previous, and December. Oh, it's not here. Oh. Then we must think again. 
Sister Mary, this parcel. Look at the paper oh. around it. January the 21st. Oh. Sister Josephine, what should I do without you? Bless your busy heart. Unwrap it quickly. Going to be a party in the big hall tonight, Miss Sarah. <laughs> Reverend Mother said so for us and the refugees. <laughs> Will it give me a dance like that time in the church hall when you're doing them big pictures? I'm sorry, Willie, but I won't be coming. Give me that paintbrush, will you? Well, Thank you. Well, not coming? Well, Ted Newlands is fixing the wireless gramophone for real music. That's oh. enough, boy. You go along and help Newlands. Right smart with his hands, that Ted is, Miss Sarah. He was saying he might even get the telephone wires mended soon, maybe tomorrow. Telephone? Downstairs, Willie, and jump to it. All right, then, since you be so sharp. Willie! <laughs> yes, sister? Will you take a message to Sister Josephine for me? Listen carefully now. Say I would like one of her special caramel custards, the ones with the cream on top, for Mrs. Grimes. Can you remember? Caramel custards with cream on top. Ah, surely. I know. Proper tasty. Thank you, Willie. You're very helpful. Uh, proper tasty, there you are. I'm sorry, Miss Khan. I'll tell him he's not to come up here again. And he's the one person who's at ease with me. Might sharpen that pencil, would you please? Hmm? What's this about the telephone? Just talk, I shouldn't wonder. If, by the grace of God and the genius of Ted Newlands, it is fixed, I suppose you'll get through to the governor. Miss Khan, you do realise this situation must end soon. We've already been here 24 hours. Yes, I realise. Uh, by the way, not too fine a point for this canvas, please. Yeah, this do? Hmm, admirably. Thank you very much. Your work on the tapestry certainly does grow. I find things do when one is pressed for time. Not so pressed you can't take a little exercise. You've been working solidly all day. We might go up to the top of the tower again and have a look at the floods before it gets dark. I wonder you're not afraid I'll jump off. I'll have to risk that, won't I? Very well, then, if I must. Oh, sister, can you let me have a length of gauze? It's uh, only for my bag. Certainly, Doctor. I've got some in the cupboard. They're short of it in surgery. Fortunately, we've got a good stock of this gauze. You can have as much as you like. What? Oh, uh, thank you, sister. I was just admiring the work on that tapestry. Miss Khan has a great feeling for colour. Yes. Let's hope this doesn't remain like the murals. Unfinished. I have a feeling they may both be finished. Oh? Huh? Sister, surely you're not still trying to convince yourself. Perhaps something is trying to convince me. How much gauze do you want to hear? Mm, oh, a little more, if you can spare it. Yes, just like that. Thank you. You think I'm still taking too personal an interest? I do think it's a pity to cause yourself so much mental distress. What causes me real distress of mind is the way everyone is accepting the situation. Sister, has it occurred to you that instead of developing these, well, these fantastic ideas, you might be of some practical if use? only I could. There you are. I'll just roll this piece up. Uh, I'll you. do that while you put the other away. Very well. I, uh... I suppose Sarah hasn't mentioned David Kingham to you. Uh... Uh, no. Since the uh, verdict, she's refused to see him, or even write. Why? She maintains she's ruined things for him, socially, politically, and in every way. Oh, I can understand how she feels, especially if she loves him. It's ridiculous. Stubborn to the point of madness. Sister Sarah will listen to you. Will you try and persuade her to see him before... My attitude is causing them both unnecessary suffering. It's a very delicate and personal matter. I can't promise. You must leave it to me. Gladly. 
But do your best. For God's sake. You feel very deeply about this case, don't you? If only I hadn't taken that damn vacation in Norwich. If only I'd been on the spot instead of Giles. Excuse me. Mr. Bonaventure? Yes, he's here. One moment. Doctor, it's for you. Oh. Uh, hello? Yes, Vicky? What? Oh, all right, I'll come. Uh, they want me to look at the Grimes baby. I'll come. No, no, no. I'll ring down if I need you. Uh, Doctor, if you hadn't been in Norwich when Jason died, would there have been a post-mortem? No. No, I would have signed a death certificate in any circumstances. Oh! oh. <laughs> Leaving me. I'm sorry, sorry Doctor. Sorry. Good to see you. Uh, well, well, he's energetic tonight. Yes, he's been called up to the Grimes' baby. And I see you're still going through the records of the trial. They're all together in this clip. The evidence is so damning, it frightens me. How did Jason take those two extra tablets? Well, could they not have been put in his food? No, that was established from the first. Sarah has never denied giving him the usual dose at eight o'clock. Remember, he couldn't have reached the fire himself. And Sarah was alone with him all that night. Aye. Listen to this. This is the counsel for the defense. Members of the jury... You are asked by the prosecution to accept the fact that this woman deliberately and with malice or forethought administered an overdose of tablets. Yet the accused neglects the simple precaution of acquainting herself with the symptoms of such an overdose. You are asked to believe this extraordinary oversight on the part of an extraordinary intelligent woman. I submit to you that the idea is preposterous. Well, there is a man of sense. Now this cutting... This is the prosecution. My learned friend has pointed out what he calls an extraordinary oversight on the part of an intelligent woman. The prosecution is concerned with plain facts, and the plain facts are these. Sarat Khan had every reason to desire her brother's death. She had the means to hand, and from the time the undoubtedly fatal dose was administered at 8 o'clock, no one visited the house until the arrival of Martha Pentridge next morning. Another man of sense. And you think you're going to beat them both? The impossible takes a wee while longer. Sister, what's it going to do to you if you fail? I daren't fail. Never in my whole religious life have I needed a sign from heaven more desperately than I do now. I daren't fail. And I can't waste precious time. Night Sister is waiting for her reports. I must put the cuttings away in this drawer. I ought not to have left them on my desk. My word, there's a gale up on that tower. <laughs> I didn't realize we were at such a height. <sighs> not been up there for years. What's the view like these days? A waste of waters. Nothing else for miles. It looks very desolate and yet very beautiful. Worst floods in living memory, I should think. Aye, so they say. Well, I can't stand the years level. Oh, neither can I. I must go and find Night Sister. I'll go down to tea now, Miss Pierce. Right, Mr. Melling. Then you might like to go off till 10.30. Why not look in at the party? I might. Do you good. Newlands will be there too. Oh, isn't their organisation incredible? Masses of people packed in, supplies stacked everywhere, the hospital full, and yet they arrange a party and allow the nurses to join in. It's the woman behind it all I find so incredible. Mm. Oh, shout when you come back. Right. Yeah, I like the music. I was always fond of a good tune. Yes, I, I'd like a walk. Oh. Yes, Miss Khan. In here, Brent. Phillips. You shouldn't. We oughtn't to be here. We've got to give Willie the slip. But this is Sister Mary's room. That doesn't make it sacred. It's certainly comfortable. I thought they had to forswear physical ease. Ah, uh -huh. so there you, Venus, Phillips. <laughs> Open that door at once and stop following me everywhere, will you? Nurse Phillips, why do you hate me so much? I don't hate you. But you do. Every time I smash speed, every time you pass me, I know you do. And Sister Mary, she say, tis wrong to hate people. Sister Mary... I might have known. 
open that door at once. No. No. Get away from me. Get away. Brent. Brent, don't leave me. Come back. I only want to be friends. Honest. I, I wouldn't hurt eh? I wouldn't hurt anyone. Oh, take your filthy hands off me. That's in the book Sister Reads. Something about if thy neighbour hate thee. But I don't hate you. You can't get the simplest thing but right. There ain't no need to be frightened. I'm <sighs> strong right enough, but I'm gentle. I, I'm real gentle. Oh, stop it. Stop it, do you hear? No, don't eat. Don't struggle. No, I, I'm going to give you a lovely kiss. <laughs> You have witted beast! <laughs> Willie! Let her go downstairs, Willie. But, but, but sister, I, I don't mean no harm. I know, Willie. I, I, I'll see to it. Go along downstairs. But it was like you said. I, I, I wanted to be friends, sister. Yes, all right. Run along now. I only wanted to be friends. I'm very sorry, Nurse Phillips. You're not hurt, are you? My God, he's got no right to be here. He'll injure someone, and when he does, it'll be your fault. Miss Carton, come back. You trade on your habit, standing there so calm and saintly. You're nothing you but a little fiend. How dare you? How dare you? Oh! Now, Miss Carton, if you please. Come along now. Come along to the bedroom. How dare you? How dare you? Let me help you up, nurse. Touch me. Now, please go up to your room and wait there till I come. I'll do nothing of the sort. I'll... You are under my authority, nurse. You will do exactly as I say. Very well. But first, I'm going to see Reverend Mother. It's time she knew about you and your fine ideas. Sister Mary. Yes, Miss Khan. Come in. I want to say I'm sorry. So very sorry. You mustn't blame Nurse Phillips. She was badly frightened. I'm used to Willie, and I forget that other people are not. But to speak to you like that... Don't distress yourself. Perhaps you would like to try and rest until after supper and then go on with your work. Yes, Sister Mary. Poor, unhappy child. No, I cannot let her go like that. Sister Mary, I just heard a very hurried and almost incredible account of events here. I should like to ask if this is correct. I have never found Nurse Phillips untruthful, Reverend Mother. She has been sent to her room. Until she leaves, it might be advisable to give her only light duties. And perhaps Willie should not be allowed so much freedom. For a little while, at any rate. I feel that is a pity. So do I, sister. But this is a dreadful thing altogether and is going to reflect on all of us. I now have to speak against my personal inclinations... I want you to understand and bear with me. Yes, Reverend Mother. Sister, you asked me to let you be in contact with Miss Kahn. Against my better judgment, I allowed it. But you were asked by myself and the warders not to raise unreasonable hopes. I assure you, I have not mentioned anything to her. You have raised your own hopes and allowed yourself to be carried away by personal emotion. Isn't that true? I suppose it is. Hasn't it occurred to you that matters reach a stage when they are in other and greater hands than ours? Reverend Mother, can you possibly reconcile the fact that any god of any creed... Please. I repeat, of any creed, could permit such a cruel and terrible matter as this? Everything possible has been done in scrupulous fairness. I cannot agree. So you place yourself above the highest legal wisdom. Which is secular in approach and reasoning. I see. You feel you are in some manner blessed in your reasoning? I wouldn't presume so far as that. I only know that never in my whole life have I been filled with such strong, such complete conviction. Then you must destroy it. How? I can only suggest by faith and prayer. Remember, the whole foundation of our training is to accept. Blindly? We enter this life to do the work of God. We learn to subdue our bodies by labor and submit our wills to higher direction. I cannot think we should also subdue our intelligence. Even intelligence cannot always recognize divine intention. 
I will not believe this is divine intention. If it should be, then I have no use for such a doctor. Sister Mary, you cannot make that kind of bargain. Let me see those newspaper reports of the trial. So she told you that? I know about them. Where are they? In this drawer. Why are you so proud and obstinate? You are privileged to handle many lives, but you're not permitted to pass judgment. Here are the cuttings. So you think Miss Kahn was responsible? I think there is nothing we can do to save Miss Kahn. But I know I must try to save you from yourself. Take the cuttings and drop them into the stove. Oh, no. It's her life. Reverend Mother, her life may be in them. It is the best way, sister. Please, I beg of you, don't ask me. As your spiritual superior, I order you. I can't. Oh, I can't. I can't. We have heard a great deal about discipline, sister. But ours is a discipline of the spirit. Very well, then. I must burn them myself. Oh. Try to forgive me, Sister Mary. Sister Bonaventure? Yes, he's here. Yes, certainly. Newlands wants you downstairs, officer. Well, thank you, sister. Uh, I won't be long, Miss Pierce. I'll be here, Mr. Melling. How are you getting on, sir? What a lot you've done on that tapestry since yesterday. Sister Agnes is getting most enthusiastic about starting the embroidery. I should like to see it completed, sister. I've not finished my part yet. You will. How quick and sure your strokes are. It must be wonderful to be creative. Sometimes it's hell. Things just won't work out. And sometimes everything goes perfectly and you feel your God. The newspaper report said you sketched every day throughout the trial. Mm, I must have drawn everything in sight. The judge, counsel, even the ushers. The trouble was, they all kept getting the same face. Whose? Jason's. Was he so much in your mind? I couldn't help thinking how he'd have enjoyed the situation. He could draw too, you know. In a facile, showy way. He couldn't be bothered to learn properly. Poor devil. Made such a mess of his life. Things might have been so different. He made your life intensely unhappy, yet you have this... this depth of pity for him. People can't help the way they're made, can they? Poor Jason. I had some grim interludes. Such as the royal case in Florida. Who on earth told you that? No one knew. Martha overheard you talking. The words stuck in her mind. Martha? Would it distress you to tell me? No. About eight years ago, I was working on a commission in Florida. Jason followed me, as usual. He got mixed up with a girl called V. Royal. Ah. When he let her down, as he always let everyone down, she gassed herself. Was there trouble afterwards? Jason didn't even appear at the inquest. She wrote him a pathetic, raving letter. But she also sent one to the coroner, saying she made no charges against anyone, but that the person concerned would be haunted by his conscience for the rest of his life. She didn't know Jason. I wouldn't have known much about it myself, but she sent me a letter, too. Why you? She seemed to think we were of one blood and therefore one character. Actually, I only met her twice. A man of his temperament, Jason knew how to be discreet. Oh, let's talk about something else, shall we? What are you making? A christening robe for the Grimes's baby. Poor Mrs. Grimes is so bewildered at having a boy that she hasn't the slightest idea what to call him. <laughs> Any suggestions? Personally, I prefer plain names. John or Charles would be nice. What's your choice? I, uh, rather like David. You've been asked to approach me, haven't you? Yes. And how do you feel about it? I'm divided between my desire to help you and my equally strong opinion that it's your own personal business. Oh, I 
Wish I'd had you to talk to in the beginning. Talk to me now, Sarah. Why won't you see David Kingham or write to him? Well, haven't I done enough? His career is spoilt. Probably the rest of his life affected. Just because he knew me. I'm sure he doesn't see it in that way. If you met just once. No, I, I couldn't bear it. If you must torment yourself, need you do it to him also? Well, he'll forget. Men do. Yes, they do. But women go on remembering. I hope he won't forget everything. I suppose everyone imagines her own love affair to be the most wonderful thing that ever happened. I know mine was. It was so mentally complete. Our mind struck sparks. Mm. I've lived it over and over again since. Particularly the little idiotic things. You know. I know. Uh, Miss Pierce, mm -hmm. I'd like a word with you over here, please. Ah, now, officer, we can't have you making overtures to Miss Pierce while you're on duty. Is there much more to do, Miss Kahn? Uh, not very much. Uh, why do you ask? Now, Miss Kahn... Why do you ask? I thought you'd like to finish, if you could. You've been very cooperative so far. For God's sake, come to the point. Newlands has made some sort of connection with the telephone wires. We contacted a nearby house and finally nodded. I've spoken to the governor. They're sending out a police launch. I should say maybe another three hours. Thank you, officer. Uh, could you and Miss Pierce give me a few minutes with sister? Quite alone. We'll go out of hearing. I'm afraid we can't go out of sight. Uh, come along into the other room, Miss Pierce. All right. Oh, it had to come, of course. We knew that. Sarah. Would you let me be with you? You can do that without leaving here. Yes, if you wish it. I've been lucky to get this peaceful interval. I've had vastly different surroundings. I, I, I've, I've completed a piece of work which I think is good. I've known you. Believe me, that means a great deal. Thank you. I'll ask Pierce to let you know. Then if you want to pray or anything... Oh, God! I... Oh, my child. My dear child. Hold on to me, that's right. <laughs> There's something the chaplain reads, isn't there? I would only see him once. But he did tell me. And the words were like a roll of drums. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall... Oh, oh, Yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. It is like a roll of drums. I've never been religious. You mean you've never troubled about the accepted form? Mm, and I don't want them now. If this has to happen, why can't they just be businesslike and get it over? It is thought we need... Intercession. Sister. Dear Sister Mary, what is it? I would give anything to help you at this moment. But how can I when I'm full of doubts as yourself? You could make a pretense. You could offer prayers and platitudes. Instead, you give me this complete honesty. Oh, sir. Do you know what I've been afraid of all along? Of losing the only thing left to me. My personal self-respect. My pride. Is that wrong? No. To go to pieces at the last moment. Disintegrate. The others are scared of that too. Melling, Pierce, even the governor. Well, they don't mention it, but each knows it's in the other's mind. Sir, you have so much courage. Don't be afraid anymore. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Since I've known and talked to you, I don't think I shall be afraid. Only, only stay with me till we leave. Please. I will. Oh, I must get on. Your hands are shaking. You can't possibly work. 
Officer. Yes, sister? Uh, Miss Kahn would like to finish her painting. With your permission, I'm going to ask Dr. Jeffries to give her a sedative. Uh, would you like me to go and find him? If you would be so kind. Right, sister. I expect he's in his room. How do you feel now, Miss Kahn? What you and I need, Pierce, is a large brandy and soda. We'll go into the bedroom, shall we? Very well. Oh, I had to come. Is it right what they say? Do you mean, is she going back, Sister I... Josephine? Where? Well, they think in perhaps three hours. I'm sorry to pet you down like this, Doctor. Well, that's all right, Billy. I'm really surprised she hasn't broken down before. Has she broken down? No, she has more courage than we have. And in her own way, more faith. Oh, we, what we ought to do is put her right out for 24 hours. But she insists on finishing that confounded painting. There, my matter fino barbitone. Got any in your cupboard, sister? Yes, Doctor. Bring it in to me, will you please? Yes, Doctor. Fancy carrying an empty bottle around with him. Here, put this full one in his bag. Right. I'll take the other in to him. Dear goodness, the clutter the man carries about with him. It's a good thing I don't carry the tools of my trade. A fine sight I'd look with a couple of saucepans and my iron bottom frying pan. Oh, there's gauze mixed up with bottles and instruments. You just can't resist tidying people up, can you? <laughs> this gauze has got paint on it. It must have come off the desk when I took it out of the bag. I'd better cut off the end. Oh, mercy. Look what's fallen out of it. It's a cutting from the newspaper. Quickly. Put everything back into the bag. Wait. Uh, give me a newspaper. A any newspaper. Hurry. Hurry. That's it. Now... We'll put this back in the gauze in place of the other cutting. That's it. And now close the bag, sister. But, but what was it doing in his bag? I don't know. Wait a minute. He asked me for that gauze yesterday. The cuttings were on my desk when he folded it. Aye. He caught that one up and put it in the bag by accident. I suppose so. And yet, I had all the cuttings in a spring clip. I remember... I was at the cupboard. I turned round and he was standing here with the file in his hand, fiddling with the clip. He could have taken it off. Not by chance. He'd need to do more than fiddle. Then he must have meant to take it. What, well, perhaps it's not one of yours. Yes. Look, there's the mark of the clip. Sister Josephine, just what does this mean? It means he didn't want you to study that one too closely. Which one is it? Uh, it's the report of his cross-examination. All my cuttings were burnt, or so I thought. There was nothing I could do but resign myself. And now, by some utterly unlooked-for incident, this is returned to me. Now, do you think you should hurry yourself all over again? It, it might be coincidence. Perhaps I've been working in the wrong direction. Perhaps this is an indication of the right one. But why should he bother to take one when, when the whole lot went into the stove together? He didn't know that would happen. It was Nurse Phillips who told the Reverend Mother about the cuttings. Who said she did? Why, no one. But she must have done. But when did she ever see them? They weren't in the desk last night. You put them in the drawer before Phillips came in. Yes. Who else knew besides you and me? The doctor. But surely he's done everything to help Sarat. Yes. And you've forgotten, haven't you, when it all happened? He was in Norwich. Aye, there's no getting over that. I want to think. Let me read this through thoroughly. No, I'll put it under the blotter till he goes. There. You know, sister, I may be wrong, but I feel as though... I've given her a grain and a half, sister. You'll let her have a warm drink in about an hour? Yes, doctor. What reason would he have for telling the Reverend Mother about the cuttings? Could it have been Willie? Willie? Oh, no, the poor lad. He couldn't read a newspaper well enough to know what it meant. All he worries about in here is whether the sweetness are sticky enough to give him two or three in one. Sister Josephine. What is it, sister? Quickly. I must read the cutting again. Sister Josephine. I must have been very stupid.
Why, how nice and tidy the hall looks. We are nearly straight again, thanks to you, officer, and Mr. Newland. It's the least we can do for you, madam. Especially in the circumstances. And by the way, the governor will be communicating with you, but when I spoke to him, he mentioned the question of any payment or, or donation. No, officer. It is our work to help you. Your people will be here any moment? Yes. The doctor's coming with us, just as a precaution. I think you were wise to suggest it. It was Sister Mary's idea. Oh. And she also suggested we might wait here in the hall for the last half hour. Easier to get out. The last moments may be awkward. The water's still pretty high. Think we shall get into that launch without a ducking, officer? I've told them to try round where the main gate would be. Then we can more or less step down from the cloisters. I hope you're right. Good evening, Reverend Mother. Oh, good evening, Doctor. Oh, uh, please, uh, please, uh, Reverend Mother. If it's not important, Martha, I should prefer you to wait. Well, you see, tis that awkward about Miss Carr. Yes. Tis Willie. He knows she's going and he's got some flowers for her. And nothing will suit him but to give them himself. Come here, Willie. Yes, Mum. Your mother tells me those flowers are for Miss Khan. For Miss Sarah, Mum. Yeah, but they won't let me give them. Oh, here she is with Sister Mary. Uh, Miss Sarah, uh, may I, Reverend Mother? All right, Willie. Uh, Miss Sarah, I thought you'd like these snowdrops. Uh, I've been growing an in kitchen window box, but Sister Josephine said I could pick on. Oh, Willie. Mm. Uh, no, they got no smell, Miss Sarah. Only just fresh and clean like. Miss, Miss Khan's very pleased. But we've got things to do. Say goodbye now, there's a good lad. Oh, goodbye, Miss Sarah. That'll be strange at the grape house without you sitting painting them big pictures. Willie? Yeah, Miss Sarah. Won't you shake hands with me? Oh, that they, they, they're not very clean, Miss. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. Goodbye, Willie. G goodbye, Miss Sarah. That's right. That's right. God be with you, my child. Now come along, Willie. Perhaps we should. Not a very good conversational effort, gentlemen. But thank you for trying. You know, now that that design is finished, I feel strange with no brush and pencil. Uh, cigarette? Uh, not now, thanks. Well, I must go on with my sewing. Miss Pierce, in the sideboard drawer, you'll find a pack of cards. The night nurses keep them there for slack intervals. Yes, sister. Uh, oh, here they are. That's right. Give them to Miss Kahn. The night nurses think I don't know and I don't say anything because they'd only have to find another hiding place. It wouldn't surprise me to hear you'd taken a hand with them. Would it surprise you to know I used to play a very good hand at bridge? Not in the least. <laughs> Knave, queen, king. Didn't someone once say, all the human passions on bits of pasteboard? One doesn't imagine human passions quite so flat and abstract. No, considering the havoc they make of our lives. You know, we come in contact with much that is strange and disturbing. I myself was once shown most vividly just how far jealousy and frustration could go. Tell us about it. Don't you think we might talk about something, well, less... The weather, the floods, the politics? No, I'd like to listen to Sister. It's the oldest story in the world. The love of a man for a woman. A good woman, I hope. At the worst, a weak one. Through the influence of another man, she died. And the first man, who must have loved her dearly, allowed his grief and bitterness to drive him beyond normal control. He killed himself. He killed the other man. And then the law killed him, legally. Well, 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 how just and merciful. It's certainly an old story. We've heard it often enough, haven't we, Miss Pierce? Yes, Mr. Mary. It has an unusual ending. You see, the law didn't know. You mean he got away with it? He must have been very clever. He planned so carefully, detail by detail. I think he'd forgotten everything but his obsession for revenge. Uh, Miss Khan, what about three-handed whist? Don't sidetrack, officer. I want to hear the end. Probably a criminal lunatic asylum. If his guilt could be proved. Why couldn't it? The law can prove anything. I learned that at the assizes. Now, please, Miss Khan. Sister, 
What makes you think this man so, so safe? Obviously. He has the finest possible defense. And what would that be? A perfect alibi. No. A perfect alibi means perfect innocence. I see you are a purist, officer. Dr. Jeffries should have said unshakable, not perfect. How? Huh. The murderer was some miles away when the crime was committed. Oh, impossible. A mine may be exploded from a distance. Murder by remote control. Was this man by any chance a scientist? A specialist in his own profession. Sister. Officer, how about going up to the tower, having a look out? I could do with a breath of air. Good idea, sir. Uh, Miss Kahn, would you care... Oh! The scissors. Oh, you cut your hand. Oh, it's only a scratch. Have you some plaster in your case, Doctor? Yes, yes, of course. Mm, it's a nasty deep cut. Yeah, let me see. Oh, no, no, nothing very much. I'll just cover it with surgical tape. What a lot of things in your bag, Doctor. Uh, please keep still, sister. Isn't this the plaster? Oh, chemist sealing tape. Abel Harmer. That's the chemist in the village, isn't it? The one who made up the prescription for Miss Khan's brother? Yes. Uh, keep your hand still, sister. I think you told me you collected the tablets once every three weeks, checked them with Harmer, and took them to Miss Khan. You're not being very kind or tactful to mention it, are you? Uh, pass me the scissors, please. If you mean on my account, I'm past caring. Why do you ask, sister? Because I know how careful one must be with drugs. A five-grain barbiturate tablet may bear a fatal resemblance to a five-grain tablet of aspirin. Thank you, Doctor. That's comfortable. I use the word fatal advisedly. Oh, officer, I do think we should ask Sister to stop this discussion, or as a medical man, I can't answer for Miss Khan's reactions. My reaction at the moment is avid curiosity. I wish you'd been a little more curious about that last file of tablets. It is just possible that one, the fourth, may have been a fraction larger than the others. Oh, why should that fourth tablet have been larger? Because I think it contained the equivalent of three ordinary ones. Sister, you're talking absolute nonsense. In other words, the necessary overdose could have been put into one tablet. You see? Two or three in one. Like Willie's sweets. The tablets were packed singly in a glass vial. According to its position, the overdose would be given on a certain day during 21 days. 21 days during which the person who had prepared that overdose could be any distance away. Officer, for heaven's sake. I... Sarat, who first brought you down to Denzel St. David? The murals for the church. Dr. Jeffries. Who prescribed those tablets and delivered them to you? Dr. Jeffries. Who actually suggested those tablets should be analysed? Dr. I won't stand by and listen to this. Sister, one moment. Are you making definite accusations against Dr. Jeffries? I am asking you to place certain information in the proper quarter for consideration. But, officer... Please, sir. Sister, will you be specific? I would like to suggest Dr. Jeffries brought Miss Khan to this village, knowing her brother would follow. Jason's high blood pressure and lack of self-control would make it easy for anyone with medical knowledge to induce a stroke. I myself am not altogether ignorant of certain drugs. I warn you to be careful. I further suggest Dr. Jeffries collected that file of tablets, emptied it, and refilled it so that the last two tablets were aspirins and the fourth, the prepared one. He then resealed the file with Harmer's tape, delivered it, and went to Norwich, knowing exactly when the prepared tablet would be given. By me? By you. Oh, God! This is purely supposition, sister. But you better make out a statement in writing, and I'll take it with me. I will. Meanwhile, Miss Kahn is entitled to see her solicitor at once. But this whole thing, it's fantastic. I'm inclined to agree, sir. But in a capital charge, the merest indication of doubt must be properly investigated. You do see that? Yes, of course, of course. Uh, I'll talk to the governor. He'll quite understand Sister Mary has allowed the emotional circumstances to carry her away. I think it's only fair to warn you that I'm not entirely relying on supposition or emotional circumstances. I did ask you to be specific. Officer, are you seriously going to listen to this wild story? Having gone so far, sir, we'd best get it clear, don't you think? But in fairness to Miss Carr, In I... fairness to yourself. Yes, sister? You may know I made a collection of cuttings about the trial. They were burnt. Afterwards, by chance, I found one. I knew it for one of mine because of the clip marks. It must have been taken from my file deliberately. Here it is, officer. Hmm. 
the report of Dr. Jeffrey's evidence. Where did you find it? In Dr. Jeffrey's bag. If you look, you'll find a cutting I substituted, wrapped up in some gauze. It's cut in the middle of two columns and makes no sense at all. Well, let's see, shall we? Uh, do you mind, sir? If you want to, but she just said she put it there. Here's the gauze. You're quite right, sister. Here is a cutting. But that doesn't prove much, does it? Not by itself. You might take out that little roll of sealing tape with Harmer's name on it. Here we are. That doesn't prove anything either. Uh, why do you suppose the cutting was taken from your file, sister? So that I shouldn't study the biographical details too closely and note two significant facts. Well? First, that about eight years ago, Dr. Jeffries visited America. <laughs> What's so strange about America? There's a state there called Florida. Officer, will you ask Miss Kahn what that conveys to her? Well, Miss Kahn. My brother... brother. About eight years ago, my brother was responsible for the death of a girl there. What was her name? She called herself B. Royal. You knew her, I think, Doctor. But I've never heard of her. I've not the least idea what you're talking about. The second fact in the cutting told me you were once very prominent in your profession, that you are the author of a standard textbook on congenital diseases. I don't see what bearing my literary achievements has I to do I felt that a man of your former distinction might be mentioned in some book of reference. Sister. Miss Pierce. Yes? Would you fetch that book from the sideboard, please, and give it to Mr. Melling? Uh, That's the one. Thank you, Miss Pierce. You will find an entry under Dr. Jeffrey's name, officer. The place is marked. Please read anything relevant. Ah, uh, Jeffreys. Leslie Jordan Jeffreys, MD, FRC, PFRCS, Cambridge and London. Born 1900... This is ridiculous. It's a preposterous idea. Damn it, there isn't a sound argument in the whole thing. Dragging me in on the strength of some guesswork about tablets which can't be proved medically, a cutting which doesn't mean a thing, and the fact that eight years ago in America some hysterical redhead killed herself. How did you know she had red hair? Why, well, we, we, you just said so. I didn't mention it. I didn't know. Give me that book. Mm -hmm. 1934. Married Beatrice Royal. Dr. Jeffries. Was Beatrice Royal your wife? Yes. Yes, until your damned brother came into our life. I must warn you, sir. Don't say any more. Bea had been restless for some years. I, I was absorbed in my work. I didn't realize she... She took a holiday alone in America. Look here, sir. I didn't know she used her maiden name there. She wrote me a bitter letter about Hugh Berth. When I received it, she'd been dead some time. I went out there and checked. I watched you too. I've watched and planned for eight years. I was always too ambitious. I should have been content to let Jason suffer, knowing I could let him linger or snuff him out just as I wished. Oh, don't, please. You were responsible for your own part, Sarah. That day you appealed to me. Those... Damaging remarks you made with Martha passing in and out. <laughs> I remember wondering just how soon it would be all around the village. And then I saw the whole thing vividly. Because while you talked, you were turning an ordinary bottle of aspirin over and over in your hand. But why me? Wasn't it sufficient that Jason should suffer? No, men don't suffer like women do. I wanted another woman to suffer the torments she must have suffered before she died. Died alone. Don't. Oh. Doctor. But now, thanks to Sister Mary, just shows what can be done with a little lack and a lot of faith. Or is it the other way round? I did warn you not to say so much, Doctor. I'm not sorry. The main thing is that Jason's dead. And if your theology is correct, Sister, in everlasting torment. Eternity is a long time, and I hope he burns through every endless second. The mercy of God is also eternal. And his compassion equally endless. Perhaps. Because after all, Salad, you won't hang. And neither shall I! Here, come back. Oh. Lock the other side. I'll have to break it down. You can't, it's solid. Use the garden door. Miss Pierce, get Newland. Yes. 
He may be going up to the tower. Can you see anything, officer? He's on the long gallery. Yes, he's making for the tower. Oh. He's going to throw himself off. No. 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 Sarat. Come to me. Oh, sister. Sister. Magnificat <laughs> anima mea, Domino. Et exaltabit spiritus mea. In Deus. In Bonaventure by Charlotte Hastings, Flora Robson starred as Sister Mary Bonaventure, with Monica Gray as Sarah Khan and Michael Spice as Dr. Jeffries. The Mother Superior was Dorothy Holmes Gore, Sister Josephine, Frida Dowie, Willie, Anthony Hall, Martha, Gladys Spencer, Melling, Dennis McCarthy, Miss Pierce, Diana Olson, Nurse Phillips, Maureen Beck, Nurse Brent, Jan Edwards. The radio adaptation was by Peggy Wells and the production by Graham Gold. This was the last play in the Flora Robson Festival in which Dame Flora has been starring in some of her favorite roles. Flora Robson is now appearing in The Importance of Being Earnest at the Haymarket Theatre, London. The time now is 17 and a half minutes to five. At a quarter to five, it'll be time for home this afternoon. Meanwhile, some music played by Julian Bream. <laughs>